the convention will come to order. Please turn off your so uh, cell phones, please. In opening the first business session of the 88th National Convention of Disabled American Veterans, it is fitting and proper that we render respect to the flag of our country. Hand salute. One. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. We'll now be led in prayer by our chaplain, Edwards. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of power and might, we thank you for the gift of committed, courageous, and dedicated people who have served in the armed forces of the United States of America, our country, and who now serve as members of the disabled American veterans. Thank you for our national commander and for each person in every level of responsibility within our organization who have loved and defended our nation, those who have helped to pass on to the citizens and the people of this world the blessings of the past, freedom, the challenge of the present, liberation, and the hope of the future, peace. Provide all of us here today with a positive faith that we may see in every difficulty and opportunity, in every blessing and obligation, and in every task and objective. Now we ask to be blessed with wisdom to guide us, patience to teach us, and hope to sustain us. Be with us today in our deliberations. Keep us within your protective care. And may your blessings rest and abide upon us all. In God we trust. Amen. Seated, please. In order for a delegate to be heard at this convention, you must first be recognized by the chair. Only those delegates at a microphone will be recognized. The delegates must state their name, chapter number, and the state they represent. I will now call on the Credentials Committee Chairperson, Donald Day, for his first report. Comrade Commander and Delegates, the National Convention Committee on Credentials was called to order for its first business session at 7.30 a.m. on August 22, 2009 by the committee advisors Michael Dobmeyer and Anthony Baskerville. The first order of business was the election of a convention committee chairperson and secretary. Donald Day of New York was elected as chairman and Warren Tobin of North Dakota was elected as secretary. This is a partial report for informational purposes only and reflects the registration at the close of registration at 4 p.m. on August 21st, 2009. At the present time, we have 429 chapters, 45 departments, 26 national officers, nine past national commanders, for a total of 1,076 delegates and 21 alternates, for a total of 8,173. This completes the partial report of the Credentials Committee, Commander. Thank you, Don. Comrade, the rules are a continuing part of our bylaws. They are part and particle of Article 3 and remain in effect continually. 
They are subject to amendment as provided in the bylaws and do not require readoption. Comrade Commander. Mike Three. Brad Barton, Portland, Oregon, Chapter One, State and Department of Oregon. I move that Article Three, Section 310, Rule 8A be changed to remove the second sentence. No one chapter shall have its members appointed to more than one convention committee. As long as there is any chapter in the district registered at the convention, which is not represented on any committee, so that the change rule will read as follows. Each convention committee shall be composed of one member or alternate from each of the national districts and one member or alternate from the Blind Veterans National Chapter. Mike Three. Mike Three. Al Linden, Delegate Gator 90, Florida, seconds the motion. You heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I will now ask the National Adjutant to read the DAV Statement of Policy. The Disabled American Veterans was founded on the principle that this nation's first duty to veterans is the rehabilitation and welfare of its wartime disabled. This provision envisions, number one, high quality hospital medical care provided by the Department of Veterans Affairs for veterans with disabilities incurred in or aggravated by service in America's armed forces. Number two, adequate compensation for the loss resulting from such service-connected disabilities. Number three, vocational rehabilitation and or education to help the disabled veteran prepare for and obtain gainful employment. Number four, enhance the opportunities for employment and preferential job placement so that the remaining ability of the disabled veteran is used productively. Number five, adequate compensation to the surviving spouses and dependents of veterans whose deaths are held to be service-connected under the laws administered by the Department of Veterans Affairs. Number six, enhance outreach to ensure that all disabled veterans receive all benefits they have earned and that the American people understand and respect the needs these veterans encounter as a result of their disabilities. It therefore follows that we will not take action on any resolution that proposes legislation designed to provide benefits for veterans, their surviving spouses and dependents which are based upon other than wartime service-connected disability. We shall not oppose legislation beneficial to those veterans not classified as service-connected disabled except when it is evident that such legislation will jeopardize benefits for service-connected disabled veterans. And while our first duty as an organization is to assist the service-connected disabled, their surviving spouses and dependents, we shall, within the limits of our resources, assist others in filing, perfecting, and prosecuting their claims for benefits. Since this represents the principle upon which our organization was founded, and since it is as sound at this time as it was in 1920, we hereby reaffirm this principle as the policy for the disabled American veterans. The chair will entertain a motion for the adoption of the DAV Statement of Policy. Do I hear a second? I entertained a motion. Mike one. Mike one. PDC Byron, District three, State of New Hampshire, seconds that motion. Oh well, that'll be a first. We need a second. Mike two. Mike two. District sixteen, Chapter ninety nine, California. Daniel Contreras seconds the motion. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. At this time, I would also like to introduce and recognize my National Chief of Staff, Norm Reznor. Standing, Norm? Okay. <laughs> okay. 
My officer of the day, Ted Buck, is Ted here? And my Sergeant Arms, Bill Bauman, from Nevada. Thank you, gentlemen, for your willing to serve. 